Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial series on EMV. Please remember to give a thumbs up and subscribe if you like these tutorials. I will be talking about the transmission protocol T0 or the character based protocol. It is the widely used protocol. There is another protocol T1 or the block transmission protocol which I will talk about in the next video. I will briefly talk about some of the unique characteristics about this protocol. The advantages and disadvantages will be clear on the next video about the T1 protocol. Next, we will take a look at the procedure bytes. These are a priori knowledge which each hardware side will have to know and use during the transaction. Thereafter, <clears throat> I will show you the four command response cases which are specified and when they must be used for a transaction. Finally, I will of course present the protocol in a demo using the hardware setup I presented in my last video. Let's get into it. This protocol is the first protocol to be specified in EMV. It is a master-slave protocol where the commands always come from the interface device, which in this case can be a bank's ATM or payment terminal. It is an asynchronous transmission and data can flow only in one direction at any time. There is a necessity of a prior knowledge to handle commands and responses. Here are the basic structure and command of commands and response, which I also did in one of my videos. Check out the other videos on commands and response if you haven't done so yet. <clears throat> the procedure bytes are the prior knowledge which both the interface device and the IC card must know to handle different commands and responses during a transaction. This will become clearer when I talk on the command cases in the next slides. The IC card always sends procedure or status bytes after receiving commands from the interface device. So if you are writing a transaction function for your terminal, you must know these procedure bytes by heart because the IC card will always use them to provide further information to the interface device. I will show you a few examples during the demo. Each procedure byte Usage depends on the command case to be used. There are four different command cases which are characterized by the presence or absence of data in both the command and response pair. For case 1, <clears throat> there is neither data in the command nor response. So in this case, only status bytes will be sent back by the IC card. In case 2, there is no data provided to the IC card but the card is expected to reply with data. Case 3, the data is sent to the card, but the card is not expected to send data apart from the status bytes. Case 4, data are sent in both the commands and response. Here is a more detailed presentation on how procedure bytes are used. Case 1, of course, has no data from both sides, so no procedure byte is used except the IC card sending only the status bytes. In case 2, data is expected from the IC card, so on receiving the command, the IC card sends 6C procedure byte and another byte which the interface device will use as the length expected to resend to the IC card. After that, the IC card will either send the required data with the status bytes at the end or will send another procedure byte 61 and the length of the data which the terminal transmission layer will have to demand with a get response command which is coded 00C00000 and then the length as XX at the end where XX is either less than or equal to <clears throat> the byte sent by the IC card after the procedure byte 61. The response data can either be demanded completely or partially until the whole data is sent Partly will either be in the case where your UR does not have enough receive buffers to accommodate all the required data. For case 3, <clears throat> the IC card sends the procedure byte which equals the ins instruction byte upon reception of the command header. After which the terminal trans transmission layer has to send the data. Then the IC card is expected to send only the status bytes. Case 4 is similar to case 3 but just that data are expected from the IC card. So the IC card uses the procedure byte 61 to inform the TTL, that's the interface device, on how much data bytes will be sent. Thereafter, 
the TTL issues a get response command to collect the data either all at once or partially until all is sent from the IC card. In this case, the get response command is sent to, to receive the entire length from the IC card. Here, the TTL issues the command two times depending on the procedure byte <clears throat> from the IC card. So as a programmer, you will always have to check if the byte before the last is a procedure byte or not. Okay, enough with the theory. Let's check it out on the live demo. Welcome to the live demo. So I've just inserted my a bank card that supports the T0 protocol into my card slot and I let it run and now I got to this point to where I uh, handle my type 4 command. So you can see my call stack here. I'm selecting the PSE. The PSE is the pay payment uh, um, system environment. Okay, as we saw in previous slides for command case 4 I expect to have the in sprite from the IC card after sending the header and then I have to send the data back to the IC card and I expect the IC card to send a procedure by 61 and then a length which I'm gonna use to send a get response command back to the IC card and then get the data from the IC card until I get the status by 9000 okay so um, now at this point, I'm expecting to get the instruction byte. I'm just going to let it run to this point. And then I check here if the byte that I receive is my instruction byte. And um, one other thing is that the IC card always sends back your request before sending the response. So I receive six bytes from the IC card. And the last byte is the response of that header that I sent to the IC card. So the last byte is A4 and I know it has to be my instruction byte so I check it out and I see that it's the instruction byte then I send the data bytes as we saw on the case 4 send the data bytes to the IC card and then get another response from the IC card so I'm just going to let it run to this point ok now I've sent the data bytes and I received some data from the IC card I received um, 17 bytes now out of that 17 bytes i'm expecting the the byte before the last to be the 61 procedure byte which when we see here i receive 17 bytes and the the byte before last is a 61 byte the procedure byte so i'm going to use this one now to get this length of byte which the ic card is ready to send to me and this is what happens in this uh if box so i check the 61 send the get response get the response i'm just gonna let it run to this point okay now i receive 2f 2f is um 32 plus 15 that makes 47 bytes so i receive 47 bytes all in this receive buffer so those are the data that i um, just got now from the IC card and um, here yeah, like I told you on the other slide if your, your, your UART or your receive buffer is not able to contain the total number of length that the IC card sent back to you after the 61 byte then you have to divide the length in a way that you can receive them partially until you receive all of them but in my case i have 512 receive buffer so i can always receive the maximum okay that's it for 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 case four okay another example is a case two and that is a read record example so after i selected my pse environment i did a read record and i won't go through it's the same procedure like i told you um this is case two, and in case two, I'm expecting a 6C procedure byte after I send the header file, and then I use the byte that I received from the IC card, send to the IC card, and I'm either expect the IC card to send the data and the status at the end, or the IC card will send a 61 byte with another, if the bytes are too long, 61, and then ask me to use a get response to get all the data bytes. So it's the same procedure, same thing here. Um, here I send the, 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 the header and a zero and I 
expect I receive everything here from the IC card. I expect at this point that I will receive a 6C procedure byte. And then after I have to use the byte after the procedure byte, this LICC byte, which I will send the, 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 the command, the header command, send the, the LICC byte, and then receive it. And then here yeah, I check if what the IC card sends back to me has another procedure by 61 and if there is then I get a response and so on and so forth so I just executed the, the, the whole program to this point and it shows here that I received 29 hex byte from the IC card at this point and if you check these are the bytes after I did the read record so it all works so good so that's it for this tutorial I hope you like it if you want any more example or you have any more questions don't forget to put it in the comment section. I'll be very happy to answer your questions. Thanks.